the Houdini Firmograph series. Today we're going to be covering how to work with lines, which is actually one of my favorite techniques in Houdini because you can create so many different looks just using lines anywhere from threads to pipes. So let's just get into it. We'll start by creating a line node and cranking up the amount of points. Now we want something that measures along the line so that we can make changes to individual sections. So an easy way to do this is to create a UV texture node, which is typically used to add UVs to a model. But if we change this to rows and columns, and then the class to points, you can see that the first value in our new UV attribute measures along the lines from 0 to 1. Now we're going to start creating the shape to that chess piece you saw in the intro. If you're familiar with lathes in other 3D programs, we'll essentially be setting that up. Well, what that means is we'll be making a shape and then rotating it 360 degrees as if it's on an actual pottery lathe. So create a point fop node and drop a vector to float so that we can access the UV attribute that we need. Create a ramp and set it to spline. And now drop a float to vector and wire that into the X axis. We'll add that to the original position. And if we hop up and adjust this ramp, you can see that we're starting to get the effect we're going for. When working with spline ramps, I like to be able to use the whole space that they give us in this curve. So to make things so they don't move too far, uh, we're going to go back into the VOP and create a multiply after the ramp, and then middle mouse click and promote the parameter. Now come back up and we have this slider to set a max distance. I'm just going to play around with the ramp here to get a profile I like. So to spin this around, we're going to use a copy transform node. This node copies its input and transforms it based on these values. It's pretty straightforward. So we want to rotate this 360 degrees. So what I do is I'll right click the total number here, copy parameter, then right click the rotate Y and click paste relative reference. What this does is links the rotate parameter to your total number parameter. So if you adjust the numbers, it actually affects the rotation. I'll click the expression before the value and I'll write 360 divided by so that it adjusts it to the right angle to make a full rotation based on the number of copies that we set. To mesh it, drop a skin node and you'll see this gap. So to set the wrap here to on to close that up. Now, since our top here was at zero, there's gonna be a bunch of overlapping points. So I'll drop a fuse node to merge them all into one. If I turn on point numbers and you can see the overlapping ones actually fuse together. So I want a nice crisp angle when there's a fold in the geometry to make it more, feel more real. So create a poly bevel node. If you increase the distance, you can see it applies that everywhere. Now we only want it to bevel where there's harsh angles. So open this exclusions tab, check ignore flat edges and bring this max angle up until it looks right. Usually something over 45 will work well. So tweak the ramp a bit to adjust the look. And there you go, we've got a chess piece. So now let's make these little swirling lines we have surrounding it. Start by copying over our first three nodes here. And I'm going to increase the points on the line and then just delete everything except for the vector to flow and ramp, and then let's drag those down to use later. To make the swirl, we're going to be using the math function sign along the y-axis. Create a float to vector to start building out our new position for the wire, and wire in the y and connect the sign to the x. It's super subtle, so we'll make a frequency control. So create a parameter node, and I'm going to set the name to frequency and then multiply the y value by that. Now, if we hop out, you have this frequency control and we have our wave, but you can see it's only in the x axis. So dive back in and hook up the sign to the z position. It gives us this weird diagonal since the x and the z are just getting the same values. So we're going to actually use sine's counterpart, cosine. Drop that down and hook it up to the Z. There's our nice swirl. 
And now let's make another parameter and name it amplitude. We'll multiply both our sine and cosine by this so that it's even. And now we have a slider affecting the width. Great. And if you wire in our ramp that we built to the multiply, we can actually start shaping the curve to contour to the chest piece. Yep. Okay. So let's make it move now. We're just going to use the frame global and add it to the y position to create an offset before going into the sine and cosine functions. You can see it's super fast, so make another parameter and we'll call it speed. And then multiply that by the frame. And there you go, we've got our motion. So this is just a line, which Houdini does have the ability to render, but we want to actually convert this into Geo. So drop down a poly wire node and there you go, we've got something. Uh, increase the subdivisions here to make it more of a tube. And it's pretty plain and even looking. So it'd be nice to have some variation along the line, maybe a taper. So one way to do this is to use the p-scale attribute that Houdini already knows. So let's just set that up. Create another point bop, and we'll do a similar setup to what we've already done. Vector to float from the UV, ramp parameter set to spline. Multiply node, promote parameter, and bind export to p-scale. Hop over to the polywire node and type at p-scale in the wire radius, and then just go over to our controls, and we'll just adjust this to something we like. Give it a little nice taper at the end. Now it's a little blocky at parts, so the last thing I'll do is drop a resample node before the polywire, and if you Turn down the length, you get more points along the line. I'm going to set it to subdivision curves, which will smooth it out a bit. And that's looking better. Now, if we merge these two together, you can see our chess piece with its accented swirl. As always, the project files containing a few extra bits of details can be downloaded on our site. Keep messing around with this technique because you can do some really cool things. And until next time, peace. <laughs>